คุณประธาน,าน yesterday Prime Minister Prayut had a phone conversation with President Xi Jinping of China. Of course, officially it was to mark the 45th anniversary of Thai-Chinese diplomatic relations, right? But it happened to come hot on the heels of the decision by the Trump administration to penalize China by ending all the uh, preferential treatment for Hong Kong in trade, right? And of course, also follow the decision by UK Prime Minister to ban Huawei equipment from the 5G system there. So, what is the significance of of this? Uh, conversation between the two leaders. I, I think it's of course significant mm. uh, in terms of reaffirming mm. uh, the long-term uh, relationship between Thailand and the People's Republic, mm. Republic of China. Mm. Uh, but of course, diplomacy is one thing. As you know, uh, our real relations between people to people, between the two countries, between the two kingdoms, uh, dated back for centuries. Mm. Uh, both respected. Uh, each other uh, in in a very deep sense, a very deep uh, way throughout the history. Mm. So I think this is just one of the uh, uh, small milestones mm. in terms of uh, formal diplomatic relations. Uh, it happens in the uh, in the environment that uh, uh, the two superpowers are now uh, increasing its uh, activities mm. uh, towards each other's uh, mm. tensions <laughs> uh, in trade, in security in South China Sea, uh, in the region, in Indo-Pacific region, or in, in what we call Asia-Pacific region. Uh, so it comes not as a surprise to us that uh, the reaffirmation of, uh, of major alliances between US, Thailand uh, took place. Uh, the connectivity between Thailand uh, and China will increase, will step up. Uh, by the way, China is our number, number one trading partner uh, this year and the relationship is now yeah, much more complex uh, than in the past. And what do you think was the most important message that came out of the conversation for Thailand? Well, I think uh, the, the message is that uh, we are very happy to engage mm -hmm. uh, and we look forward to strengthening, strengthening up our relations mm -hmm. in different uh, areas, mm -hmm. uh, in trade in particular, uh, in uh, cultural uh, areas. Uh, uh, chi China invested a lot mm -hmm. in terms of yeah. building up uh, cultural activities. Uh, Thailand uh, is, I think, the, the, the country that China invested more in terms of uh, putting institutions, education, uh, 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 money, students. So I think uh, it reaffirms that uh, uh, the road ahead will be even more yeah closer That's right. between the two countries. Right. And Prime Minister, you said we need more Chinese investment. Yes, of course, of course. Uh, uh, well, we need more Japanese investment, we need more US investment, we need more Korean mm -hmm. investment. Uh, I think we need more investment in Europe, from Europe too. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so I think this is a recovery process that Thailand is looking forward to. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's now, but it's now it's much more complicated mm -hmm. as we are now resuming uh, military activities with the U.S. Uh -huh. uh, military exercises uh, should resume. We have a small con contingencies uh, mm. exercising in Hawaii right. uh, uh, this week with the U.S. Mm. Uh, about 150, 170 uh, soldiers will be returning yeah. to Thailand, mm. and toward the end of the year, we may resume more exercises mm. uh, with the U.S. Uh, on one hand, but on the other hand, we are now opening up for for, for the Chinese. Uh, mm. Uh, people to come back oh, to Thailand. Yeah. And of course, the investments uh, in the Eastern Economic Corridor, mm. uh, submarine projects is now uh, uh, moving forward, and, and many more technology exchanges. Uh, but, but how do you think this will be seen from the Western point of view? Would it be seen as, uh, as Thailand leaning more toward China, or would it be seen as part of the balancing act by Thailand between China and Western countries? Well, it's well known for Thailand mm. to do a balancing act mm. in a more complicated and complex way. Mm. But of course, uh, European nations may increasingly worry about that uh, act. Uh, uh, I think some may favor. Well, all will trade with China, mm. uh, for sure. Yeah. Uh, but in terms of politics, in, in, in terms of security, may, they may be more worried about engagement between China and different countries. Mm. Uh, it happens that Thailand engages more with the US mm. in terms of security and military. So that will be 
uh, quite comfortable for Thailand to explain mm. uh, to these countries that we are not moving away from the U.S. engagement. But, Thai, but the U.S. is moving toward the election in November. But probably the U.S. is going to step up that game in Indo-Pacific region. What's your take during this complicated juncture? Yes, I think, uh, I think that, ref that reflects, uh, I think, the American voters are concerned also about the role of the Chinese in the world. I think no matter who wins the November election, I think this trend may not change in terms of American thinking about rise of China. I think you will see the current president, the new president, continue uh, uh, trying to engage, if not contain, mm. China in many areas. And you will see the new administration, as well as the old administration, old administration trying to persuade uh, their friends, their alliances, mm. to move away from sensitive areas mm. and that that the U.S. and alliances deem uh, important. Military technologies, for example, uh, resources management, uh, for example, energy uh, area, for example. Uh, these are the areas that are sensitive to the U.S., uh, to the uh, U.S. public. Mm -hmm. uh, so you will, you will see this trend continue upward, uh, even maybe more intense after the new administration in the U.S. Uh, move into office. You have a new mandate. And uh, both parties are now running a campaign against yeah. China in many areas. That's right. Uh, yeah. Not all areas. <laughs> uh, but so you, you will see a new upward trend uh, going against mm. China uh, yeah. in different ways. Mm. So it's important for ASEAN to, to stay together, to have our own roadmap on how to engage mm. with China and with the US, the uh, Asia, uh, uh, Indo Pacific. Uh, ASEAN Indo Pacific outlook. Uh, that piece of uh, document is very important. That's a blueprint for ASEAN countries to engage mm. with the two countries mm. uh, without having these two giant, two superpower pulling uh, small ASEAN country mm. away, mm. you know, from 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 the centrality that as, as ASEAN is trying mm. to nurture. Yeah, in principle, it seems beautiful to have ASEAN as a unit. But in reality, especially with the issue of South China Sea, we can see how yesterday when Mike Pompeo came out to blame China that they act illegally and that involved with at least four countries of ASEAN who try to claim the South China Sea as well. Yes. So how would Thailand should, should remain? Or what, what should be the take of Thailand on this case? Well, I think Thailand may have to work harder trying to uh, go between uh, different countries uh, on this issue. Mm -hmm. uh, on one hand, uh, the Chinese uh, built up in this area is ongoing and will continue to, uh, uh, to grow in the future, uh, reflecting the uh, military economic uh, uh, mm -hmm. power of, uh, of China. Uh, China may move in more into these areas. Mm -hmm. But on the other hand, you will see the U.S. and alliances may raise more concern may try to support smaller ASEAN nations mm. uh, which are increasingly concerned about the role of the Chinese. So Thailand is in the middle. Uh, uh, some countries like Malaysia may be very concerned because the claim of the Chinese is about 50 miles away from Malaysian yeah. shores, uh, a thousand miles away from, mm. uh, from China. So smaller countries like this may tend to uh, may tend to be even more uh, uh, persuaded mm. uh, to go uh, uh, co and confront China. Mm. So Thailand has to be in the middle. Uh, Vietnam uh, <laughs> did confront China already, you know, uh, in yeah, the past. Yeah. So we are in the middle trying to make sure that peace, stability, mm. prosperity, the three important uh, areas that we yeah. sign the agreement with the U.S. Mm. will be maintained for ASEAN. So it's quite a challenge then for ASEAN to make sure that it doesn't get divided by this increasing geopolitical rivalries between two superpowers, right? Exactly, <laughs> especially uh, in the environment that both superpowers are now stepping up uh, mm -hmm. their temptation, mm -hmm. their, their offers, mm -hmm. uh, their support mm -hmm. for these different uh, smaller uh, countries. Mm -hmm. We are not affected, so we are not really persuaded uh, by both agreements uh, uh, because we are not a stakeholder, so we are in the middle. Uh, in this sense, uh, it should 
give the Thailand a mm. very unique position mm -hmm. uh, uh, to be able to uh, be a bridge right. uh, to yes. go in between. Yes. So can you give some concrete example as to what Thailand can do in serving as a bridge between those uh, conflicting like, countries which are claimants to the, yeah. to the uh, islands? You need to ask the new foreign minister uh, <laughs> as he uh, uh, will come to office and maybe push for this policy. Uh -huh. uh, but yes, this is a critical mm -hmm. uh, question indeed that we need a concrete example mm -hmm. or concrete programs uh, to, uh, to offer uh, in the region. Prime Minister Bayut already said, mm -hmm. can we start with, for example, environmental issues mm -hmm. that all countries are concerned, yeah. energy issues that can be shared mm -hmm. uh, in certain areas. And, uh, so uh, these are the issues that uh, Prime Minister has already in mind Mm -hmm. already talked about it in ASEAN meetings, yes. especially when Thailand was the chair of ASEAN uh, last year. Mm -hmm. So these are the issues that are now uh, standing to be, to be pushed forward. Yes. Since you mentioned Prime Minister Perjut, is he keen on foreign policies? Of course, uh, prime ministers, uh, presidents, uh, leaders. Because we haven't heard him talk much about foreign policies. Well, the Thai people should like it. Uh, that we talk more about economy. Yeah, yeah. We talk but more we, about. But you, you are confident he is very interested and uh, serious about foreign policy. Yes, he's just on the phone with uh, foreign leaders, including mm -hmm. uh, China. So that, uh, including uh, ASEAN uh, meetings, mm -hmm. and he did well uh, in many occasions. Uh, uh, if you notice some of his uh, suggestions about mutual trust, mm -hmm. mutual benefit, and and mutual respect are now adopted by ASEAN. Mm -hmm. uh, no matter what you do in ASEAN, you need more trust, you need mm -hmm. more respect. Mm -hmm. And in, in the end, you, you need more benefits mm -hmm. coming from those uh, mm -hmm. relationships. So that is uh, his leadership you know, in sure. ASEAN. So that means that he would not hesitate to see Thailand play a more active role in bridging differences among the ASEAN countries over the issue of South China Sea. Well, of course, but in a Thai way. Mm -hmm. uh, in a Thai way, meaning that uh, we are not going to get involved directly mm -hmm. uh, in, in a conflict. Uh, that we are not a claimant, uh, we are not going to get involved in a conflict in the issues that uh, we are not against or for. Uh, so I think uh, the Thai approach uh, will, will be bringing people, countries together to work, for example, in a Mekong sub-region uh, to make sure that the Japanese, uh, uh, the US, uh, the Chinese are working you know, in different uh, projects together with the Thai uh, 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 with Thailand as a bridge, um, creating a master plan, for example, in ACMEX, mm -hmm. and, and trying to use money from these three uh, uh, countries to benefit uh, uh, Laos, Cambodia, mm -hmm. Vietnam, and Myanmar. And that's our goal. Mm -hmm. I think we also donated our money into the ACMEX uh, to make sure that these three or four countries who are now moving ahead in terms of development can cash on uh, with the rest of ASEAN. And for the case of telecom like Huawei, which is the UK is very much under pressure until they have to announce the ban of using Huawei equipment. What if Thailand is caught in the middle between the US and China, like this case? What do you think should be the path of Thailand? Well, this, this is a very difficult and challenging mm -hmm. issue. Uh, uh, for the time being, I think uh, the decision has not been made clearly. Uh, uh, like any other countries uh, uh, that you mentioned. Uh, but it could be done that uh, in certain areas that are sensitive mm -hmm. to the uh, security and military operations can be re-examined. Uh, but it's not easy. It's not easy. You, you need cooperation from China. Yeah. You need cooperation. You need understanding from the US. Mm -hmm. uh, and you need to be very careful in yeah. selecting. And in the end, it's also about cost effectiveness. Yeah. Uh, so these have to be worked out in the future. Uh, surprisingly, some of the countries changed their mind uh, in the last uh, few months right. and switched you know, yeah, switch yeah. side. Uh, um, mm. Thailand has not done yet, uh, but we are now evalu evaluating that. Then uh, the National Security Council mm. has a special group uh, working on this issue. Mm. So I'm, I'm, I'm very confident that they will make yeah. the right decision. Because a few weeks ago, I'm sure you remember that a group of executives of Huawei met the Prime Minister at the government house, right? Mm. And in the conversation with them, the Prime Minister said uh, Thailand welcome Huawei to help Thailand develop the 5G network. So that could that be seen as a signal that Thailand uh, is sort of more ready than many other countries in joining hands with Huawei in 
developing the next phase of uh, telecommunication network? Uh, well, Without I think being worried too much about the security threat as some other Western countries. It's a very unique and complicated situation uh, for Thailand. Mm -hmm. On one hand, you have China as a number one yeah, yeah. trading partner. It would be very odd not to engage in certain critical areas mm -hmm. with your number one trading partner. Mm -hmm. But then again, you, have, you also have a number one security uh, uh, ally, that is the US. Uh, and that would be very odd not to listen to them uh -huh. about the concerns on security. So it's a challenge for us to meet halfway yeah, right. to make sure that we, we can isolate uh, some of the concerns mm. and make sure that the commercial yeah. and the uh, military applications will not be co in conflicting with each other. Yeah. The, the challenge is how to be a good friend with one and not antagonizing the other, right? Yeah. <laughs> and the challenge is can you manage the yeah. technology? Yeah. But all these questions, we know that uh, Thailand has been conducting an independent foreign policy, right, based on national interest. But would there be any pressure from countries like the U.S. in coming, I mean, in the near future, for Thailand to keep a distance from China because of the increasing geopolitical rivalry between them? Would would that can you do you anticipate that kind of pressure from the U.S.? Well, I think the distance. Uh, uh, Comfortable distance has to be kept mm. between Thailand and partners uh, in general. Uh, and that's a classic, typical Thai mm. diplomacy. As you notice, uh, mm. they've never been close or too close uh, uh, for comfort for anyone. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think that's a typical uh, uh, position. Uh, the, the, the real challenge is how to explain that uh, comfort zone uh, to your different partners okay. or how to compensate. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, the concern on one to the other. Uh, I think uh, that's a challenge. But this position is well known. This Thai position, yeah, yeah. yeah. not not middle, fifty fifty percent. It's a very complex engagement position, uh, mm. uh, trying to accommodate uh, your yeah. friends yeah. and yeah. trying to isolate their concerns mm. and work with their concerns mm. uh, successfully in the past. And we hope mm. to do so in the future. Uh, I'm sure we have answers uh, mm. for the two giants, uh, <laughs> and they, they may not like it 100%, but in the past, they, they accept uh, that this is the Thai way. Yeah. So is, the, is it like we are walking on tightrope between two <laughs> superpowers? And should we try to find other balance, like Russia or India? Uh, I prefer to think that we are walking in a rose garden. <laughs> but you have to beware of the thorns. Uh, you might get yeah. hurt, you know, but along the way you smell the flowers and they will enjoy the benefits. Okay. You know, you're talking about, we were talking about the Thai balancing act between two superpowers, right? I think the, the, it has been obvious that we have been doing that because just a week earlier you had the U.S. Chief of Staff, General James McConville, yes. visiting Thailand and, and yesterday you had Xi Jinping speaking to our Prime Minister. <laughs> Right. <laughs> yes, yes. And uh, this is a very classic, uh -huh. typical Thai diplomacy. And then you have, uh, you have a different engagement mm -hmm. uh, at the same time, or almost at the same time, uh, to reflect our deep commitment with both countries in different ways, uh -huh. in different ways and in, in different areas. But it adds up to a very uh, stable and balanced uh, relation in the end. But did, did they happen by design or I mean, partly by circumstances? that the two I mean, events I mean, being so close to each other? Well, you know, we would like to control all events <laughs> if it's possible. <laughs> but in reality, you know, right. that's up to uh, the circumstances. But I think they try okay. uh, to control these events. Are we in the middle of Cold War ideology right now? Well, sort of. Sort mm. of. I think uh, the model that the Chinese is developing is very interesting. Mm. You know, uh, centralized. Uh, put the uh, poverty at the front yeah, of the yeah. issue, mm. stability and growth successfully. It's mm. so amazing that they have done that in the past few decades. But then again, you have democracy, you have human rights, freedom, liberty. Mm. This are so attractive, attractive to the Thais, yeah. especially the young generation. They're, they're very fond of that uh, space. Mm. So you need to marry the two, which is very difficult. But uh, this is what we try to do. Yeah. And can the same old textbook on how to behave during Cold War no. Still be applied no. some, some, yeah, okay. prin some principles never change in international politics, yeah, yeah. but the applications change so much. 
Mm-hmm. And uh, we, uh, information is available, and then you have new capabilities, new technologies, uh, and new complexities. Mm-hmm. So it's very difficult, very challenging. Yes. Uh, especially you have trade at the center, you know, uh, of the argument. Mm-hmm. Uh, someone said it's it's like pre World War One or two, but mm-hmm. I don't think so. This is so different because yeah. of globalization mm-hmm. and technology. Mm-hmm. You know, during the visit here by the U.S. Army Chief of Staff. There was a piece of document that w- was signed with the Thai Army, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's called something like a Thai U.S. Army Strategic Vision yes. Statement, right? Yes. I think my question is, we we I, th- I think we have dozens of agreements, treaties with the U.S. Right? But why did we need another one? Yeah. So what is it all about? This uh, this statement of vision. Uh, uh, it's unique in two or three mm. perspectives. One, it put the Indo-Pacific at the center of the mm. of the document. It mentioned Indo-Pacific three or four times, oh, yeah. uh, 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 and that's very important. Indo-Pacific meaning then we include India and mm-hmm. Asia in a more balance, not mm-hmm. tipping into the east, not tipping to the east, okay. west. Its center is ASEAN, mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. it it focuses on Indo-Pacific region. And it's something not covered by other documents that were signed earlier, right? Except last year, mm-hmm. the DOD and US okay. uh, yeah. uh, alliances uh, mm-hmm. uh, document, mm-hmm. uh, which signed November 17 last mm-hmm. year. Uh, that was the beginning of of this uh, the, uh, of this uh, yeah. current document. Mm-hmm. Uh, so it focused on the stability, prosperity, uh, and, and open communication, uh-huh. and safe sea lanes, and oh, all kind mm-hmm. of concern mm-hmm. in this. It's very clear mm-hmm. uh, uh, what the U.S. want to do with the partners. Exactly. Second, it focuses on uh, modernization, re-engagement with Thailand, interoperability, mm-hmm. and more specifically on the special units, uh, special weaponry, that they are going to work together. Mm. And, and last, of course, they uh, focus on military operation rather than war, uh, uh, including COVID and that, mm. which is new. Mm. Uh, and there will be more exchanges. It's more at the operational level. Yeah. Right? yeah. yeah. This is at the uh, services level. Mm. Yeah.